move on now to Isander El Amrani. Uh, Isander El Amrani, independent political analyst, writer based in Cairo. He runs the popular blog Arabist.net. Isander, thank you for joining us. I know you're on deadline. We are hearing um, reports of not only one self-immolation, but another man setting himself on fire. fire. What effect is the Tunisian revolution having in Egypt right now, in this period leading up to the election? Hi, I'm glad to be here. Um, the, 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 what's happening in Tunisia is having an electrifying effect, uh, not only in Egypt but through the, throughout the Arab world. Uh, and, and you know, I think we're seeing a lot of positive sides of this: uh, people getting energized, people getting excited, organizing uh, protests of their own. There's a major one uh, scheduled now for 20th of January in, uh, uh, across Egypt. Uh, we'll see how that works out. The situation in Tunisia was different than Egypt. It doesn't necessarily have to go the same way. Uh, unfortunately, we're also seeing some 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 rather sad uh, effects of it. The now two, maybe three. There, there's just a report that came out about uh, perhaps a third person that set themselves on fire. So three people in two days. Uh, two of them in front of Parliament. One of them in Alexandria. This is what we're hearing now. Um, I mean that's clearly uh, an act of desperation, just just like Mohammed uh, Bouazizi, the, the 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 man who started the the Tunisian uprising, uh, was driven by desperation and humiliation. Um, a lot of the same circumstances exist in Egypt and other Arab countries. And the effect, how is it being understood, this revolution in Egypt, where um, the revolution in Tunisia, the effect in Egypt, uh, where? Um, President Mubarak has reigned for decades. Absolutely. Uh, President Mubarak will be, uh, in, in, uh, later this year, will have ruled uh, for, for 30, uh, 30 years. That's seven more than, than, than Ali did. And, uh, and there's a lot of frustration, uh, frustration only about him being in place for so long, about the uh, political stagnation and, and, and lack of democracy. Egypt just held last month elections that were, that were a farce that returned basically over 90 percent of the uh, uh, of parliament to the to the uh, ruling party and but but also about the uncertainty over the future the possibility that that he's placing his son uh, Gamal as his uh, as his heir to replace him in the perhaps as early as the presidential election that's scheduled for September the, the, the I think a lot of people. The, the first lesson for, from Tunisia is is that revolution is possible. You have to remember that there hasn't been anything like this in the Arab world for decades. Perhaps you know if, if, it, if it does, if democracy does take hold in Tunisia, perhaps ever. And and and, and a lot of people would have said that Tunisia would, would have been the last country where, where it would happen because it was such a tightly policed state. Uh, and this is what a lot of people have felt in Egypt. There's been protests in Egypt for the last five years now. But this could really give a sense that that, that that change is a real possibility. It could really drive away some of the cynicism that's dominated a lot of uh, even in activist circles about the uh, the impossibility of uh, of, uh, of change of democracy. And how are people organizing in Egypt as a result? As I mentioned, there's, there, there's existing activist groups that are, that are um, uh, organizing a protest uh, later this month. There's uh, campaigns that you're starting to see online to see about you know, what can be done, what can be, how, how can the Tunisian uh, model be, be, be replicated. Of course, it's, it's hard to plan a revolution. You have to remember that, that, that uh, what happened in Tunisia was spontaneous. And the, 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 currently, the, the feeling in Egypt is one of, of tremendous uh, hope. At the same time, uh, just because there's such a political vacuum, such an absence of leadership, people aren't sure how to go about it. Uh, you're seeing leaders like uh, uh, opposition leaders like Mohammed El Baradei, the former uh, uh, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency and a Nobel laureate. Um, Say well, what can you know? Tunisia shows that, that 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 change is possible, and that Tunisia should be a lesson to the government. They have to mend its ways. They have. They shouldn't let things get to uh, a revolution, a revolution and potential chaos. But 
actually implement uh, uh, reforms first. We're, we're also seeing a reaction from the government. The government, if you read the state press in the last few days, is coming out with assurance upon assurance that uh, food prices will be uh, kept under control, that the government is uh, working for the uh, uh, benefit of citizens. I, I doubt that's going to convince people. Uh, this government has been in place a long time. The situation on the ground is, is, is really not great, especially for uh, the large number of Egyptians who, who live under the, uh, the, the poverty line. But, but to see how it develops, I think it's still a little bit early. Isandra El Amrani, we want to thank you for being with us. Independent political analyst, writer based in Cairo, runs the popular blog Arabist.net. Video we were showing on our broadcast uh, was from last April in Egypt. Um, and you can go to our website to see that video at democracynow.org. When we come back, we'll be joined by Juan Cole, professor of history at the University of Michigan. And we're also going to go to the two time Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Anthony Shadid, a foreign correspondent for the New York Times based in Baghdad and Beirut. Root um, uh, has been reporting from Lebanon. This is Democracy Now! Stay with us. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.